right, today on the bench is a notch filter. Uh, I stole this design from a total harmonic distortion analyzer, a DIY, I should say, a DIY total harmonic distortion. So some guy was doing audio, he wanted his own total harmonic distortion analyzer and uh, couldn't afford one, so he went and built one. And uh, maybe someday I'll finish that project, but um, I've, I've mentioned before my Keithley uh, uh, 2015 has total harmonic distortion built into it. And the way that it works is it actually captures a waveform and then does a, a, uh, an FFT on it. And then uh, the FFT tells you the uh, carrier and then all the, all, the, all the harmonics of the carrier. And what total harmonic distortion is, uh, is ignoring the carrier what is the sum of all of the other things? Because the carrier, if all you had was carrier, you would have perfect, a perfect sine wave. But any distortion adds up in the, uh, all of the uh, subsequent harmonics. So what these uh, old school uh, THD meters did was they used a notch filter to remove the carrier, and then what was left over was the distortion and the noise, right? That's what THD is. Um, and so um, the test, uh, test audio, the test frequency, is also derived with the same box. So the test signal and the notch uh, filter are adjusted to be perfect so that you null out. In fact, I think that's actually one of the adjustments before you actually make a measurement is you adjust this null so that, that you get maximum uh, removal of the carrier and then you put that in your circuit. And then again, what I, uh, if, if you had a perfect signal, you can run that in to your, to your, once you get that adjusted, you can then run that, your, your own signal into here and you should get nothing out, but you'll get some residual. So what you do is you adjust your dial so that reads zero. And then you put in your amplifier or whatever you're testing. And then if you get other stuff out, that's due to distortion and noise. So uh, that's, the way those, that's the way those things work. Um, I'm kind of concentrating on filters right now and I wanted to see how this filter performed and whether you, this was sufficient or whether maybe two stages of this would be better or a different uh, topology would be, would be, would be better. Um, but uh, that's what this one did and it certainly worked in the past for somebody. All right, and of course a big shout out to PCB Way uh, for supplying all these PC boards for free. Uh, they they uh, make all of my uh, PC boards for free from my projects, and I use their website to um, share all of my designs. So um, I'll have a link down below if you want to go to my shared site on PCB Way. You can uh, get my boards. Uh, I get like a 10% cut if you order a board from them, and uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, I've got a function generator hooked up to the input and uh, we are gonna see what the filter does. So the way that I have this set up is that I have the uh, generator set, that set up to sweep. And so it's sweeping from 100 hertz to two kilohertz. So 100 to 2000 hertz. And then it, uh, and then it, it repeats itself, right? Oops. So it's sweeping, 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 sweeping and repeating itself. So we can, we can take a look at, at this, and the amplitude's fairly flat. Let's take a look at the output. I'm gonna move my scope probe to the output, and there we go. We're seeing the filter do its thing. It is a notch filter, so it's, gonna, it's going to re, re, attenuate a certain frequency. And um, so again, this is where we start the sweep, and this is where we start, 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 stop this. First. <laughs> Can't talk today. Start the sweep and stop the sweep, there we go. Um, and so let's go ahead and adjust the two potentiometers that we have. Uh, so if I can, can I do this all in one shot here? Sort of maybe, mm, yeah, sort of maybe. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to adjust the top potentiometer and there we go. We're changing the frequency. I can go to a lower frequency and I can go to a higher frequency. Now it does not attenuate as much. So if I go to this higher frequency, you can see that it's not attenuating as much. So if we reach down and we uh, adjust the bottom, there we go, we adjust the bottom resistor, we can get it to null again. Um, 
So between those two uh, adjustments, we can set the center frequency and we can set the uh, we can set the nulling. Let's see if we can't put it just for instance around that mark. I don't know what frequency that mark is, but we'll just say that's where we want to have it. And then we will adjust to sort of minimize the minimize this. And uh, yeah, so that is the filter. Um, it is operating as described. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's see, let's, let's zoom in way down there. Yeah, it's, it's attenuated pretty good. I want to get a really, really sharp null down there. Oops. I don't know if, yeah, I think that's about, that's about as good as it gets, maybe right, right down there. All right, so the reason I'm using this uh, oscilloscope technique here is that it's basically real time and I can adjust it. Now, this uh, oscilloscope does have a Bode plot function on it, so I think that's the next thing we'll do is run a Bode plot now that we've adjusted it and see how this, uh, how this filter behaves. All right, to do a Bode plot, we're using the generator from the uh, Rigol and we're inputting that into the, uh, into the input here. And we have the channel one probe connected to the input so we can monitor what the input is doing. And uh, we have the channel two probe on the output. So uh, let's see here on our, we go to Bode plot, which is down here. We set the parameters, uh, amplitude and stuff. We'll do a start frequency of 100 hertz. Do a stop frequency of two kilohertz. We'll do, let's say, 100 points per decade. Get a nice smooth plot. We'll do an amplitude of, say, one volt. Oops, one volt. Okay, 100 hertz, two kilohertz, 100 points, one volt. Okay, that all looks good. And then we'll tell it to start, see if it's gonna behave or not. Yeah, there we go. Is it doing anything? Did I push the wrong button? Looks like I pushed the wrong button. Uh-oh, my Rigel crashed. Yeah, Rigels do crash. And mine just crashed. All right, I had to reboot. And let's see if I can do it this time. Yeah, there we go. So it's going to sweep the frequency range and it's going to keep track of the amplitude. So, uh, you know, um, output divided by input is gain. It's going to plot that on a log scale in purple. It's also going to look at the phase difference between the output and the input. And that phase difference, it's going to plot in green. So a true Bode plot has both amplitude and phase, both. And there we go. Uh, it's saying that we've uh, peaked at uh, 977.2 hertz, um, and that is a, about what I wanted. Um, I want this thing at about one kilohertz, and so, yeah, that's probably close enough, although we could dial it in probably fine. Um, I would need to do the other technique. This You can see that this is so slow. You couldn't use this to actually peak the, uh, uh, peak the circuit. So a lot of times you need to use one measurement technique to adjust and one measurement technique to val validate or to characterize and stuff. So you can't just rely on one. And I hope that shows up. The purple, purple trace is dipping. If I uh, grab the marker, I think there's a marker on here. Yeah, cursor. Uh, so I can move this one. And you can see uh, right here, two things are happening. One is that the phase is changing radically, um, and one is that the uh, amplitude is dipping down to about minus 30 dB. So we have about a 30 dB notch filter at one kilohertz, or 977, and uh, yeah, it's doing, 
doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah, it works pretty good.